Hello friends, how are we doing? It's time for a video I get excited about, but also I feel, I always feel very nervous for this video. We'll get into why in a second. But we're gonna be talking about my most anticipated releases for the first half of the year. I always do it in two halves because there's loads of books that are gonna come out in the second half of this year that we're all gonna be excited about that haven't even been announced yet. New Richard Osman book, he's got a book coming out in September. Do we know what it's about? No. Actually, I listened to his podcast. This is, we're already off on a tangent. <laughs> In my brain, I want to keep this video very concise because we've got a lot of books to talk about, but here we go. He has started doing a podcast called The Rest is Entertainment where he talks about like movie and TV. If you don't know, Richard Osman worked in TV for many, many years before he started writing books. He like created a lot of famous TV shows, I think like Deal or No Deal. I don't know if he created it, but he like created a lot of really famous, particularly game TV shows here in the UK. So that's predominantly what he talks about, but he did speak about his new book the other day and he was like, yeah, I've barely written it. I gotta get it in by March. <laughs> so there's a Richard Osmond book coming out this year that we don't know anything about, or we know a little bit about. We know the vague synopsis is about a father, daughter, father and daughter-in-law detective agency duo. But anyways, tangent over. <laughs> We're gonna be talking about my most anticipated releases for the first half of the year, and I've got over 40 books to talk about. 40 books. This is too weird. I don't like to read synopses to you in this video. <laughs> I like to turn up and just tell you the the thing the things that stand out to me, but I like to free wheel it basically. I have just gone through and read the synopses of all of these books. So like, it's not like I'm underprepared. I have read the synopses of all of them, but I'm not gonna read the synopses out to you. I'm gonna tell you what I think is gonna make you most excited. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna phrase it my own way. There's no plagiarism here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying people who read out synopses are plagiarizing. I will speak for myself. That's a horrible thing to say. No, it's not. I'm feeling nervous because we want to keep this book, this video snappy. We don't want it to be 40 minutes long. Um, and we've got over 40 books to talk about. So we should just begin, shall we? And I'm going to tell you about all the books that you should be excited about coming out this year. Really, I have no business talking about 40 books I'm excited coming, I'm excited about coming out in the first half of the year when I read about 35 new releases every year that come out that year. So... Ignore that. Um, but let's get into it, shall we? I'm excited for a lot of these books. I get very excited talking about new releases because I'm just, they're so full of promise. <laughs> I just wanna say, I'm putting the release dates, we're going in order of release date. However, some of these release dates are UK ones. Some of them won't be UK ones, some of them will be the US ones and the book won't come out then in the UK and I just didn't know that. The new World of Children book comes out in February in the UK, but it's already out in the US. So I've got it down as coming out in February because it's not out for me, but some of these books, oh, they've got the release date wrong for the UK, and some of them, it will be the UK release date, and those of you will be like, what, that's coming out here in the US. Moving on. <laughs> okay, first we have got The Heiress by Rachel Hawkins. I have read Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins, and I really did enjoy it. This one sounds very intriguing. It's about this heiress who dies. She's very notorious. I think she was like kidnapped at some point. She's got like millions and millions of pounds of wealth. And her wealth goes to her adopted son. And at first he ain't interested in it. And he's like, no, I'm all right. And he goes off, gets goes to the countryside, gets married. But then his uncle dies and it goes back to him again. He's like, okay, right, I'm coming back. I think it's to do with him and his wife going back to this house and family secrets, family tensions. Maybe someone's gonna murder for, for the money. Who knows, you know? Rachel Hawkins, I've only read one book, but for me, it was very like fun thriller. You know, it was very like, we're here for shits and giggles. We're here to have fun. We're not gonna take ourselves too seriously. And that's the heiress. Then we have The Night of the Storm by Nishita Parekh. This is a debut and it's set during a hurricane and I believe a woman and her son who have recently, the woman's recently gone through a divorce, left the, the, the son's father. Everyone in their apartment block gets chucked out because they're like, it's not gonna be safe in the hurricane. So they go to her sister's family home. The husband's a little bit weird. Then I think some of the husband's family turn up and then someone dies. And they're all trapped in this house in the storm. Ah, I saw the drama, Mick, I just love it. I love an isolated close circle murder mystery. I feel like that I didn't read a lot last year. I actually didn't read. I've got a video coming up where I'm gonna recommend the 10 best murder mysteries I've read in the past year. And it was actually a struggle. I am not reading enough murder mysteries. I feel like we had a we had like a increase in them and then they're, they're dying again and I'm not happy about it. I'm really, really excited about this one. It sounds incredible. I oh, the cover, I feel like it's so atmospheric. I'm so ready for it. Then we have Only If You're Lucky by Stacey Winningham, who is an author I've somehow read their two first books, even though they're not like an incredible author to me. I've read them. <laughs> This one, very interestingly, is about female friendships. It's about, I think, a un at university, and one of them is like this star girl, you know, the other one's shy, and they become friends, and they move in together, and then a nearby, like, guy from another, what's the word, frat? Oh, I don't know American words. Is murdered, and the star girl... Hey, looking at the 
She goes missing and um shy girl is like gonna investigate you know which is interesting because Stacey Willingham's first two books have been very much based I feel like on a little bit older characters very much to do with like couples more domestic thrillers she hasn't uncovered female friendships yet I'm intrigued to see how she does that then we have the mystery guest by Nita Prose this is the sequel to the maid we're following Molly the maid again at her hotel and a murder happens I think it's like a really well-known mystery author is murdered is it his secretary is it the doorman? Has Molly got something to do with it? But Molly's gonna investigate it again. And I did enjoy The Maid. I didn't love it, but I think it was a fun mystery. So I'm excited for the next one in the series to come out. Then we've got one that I actually already own. I got a advanced copy. Well, I think this is a finished copy, but I got it advanced. It is Helly and Death by Oscar Jensen. This is Scandi. What's it called? Scandi Cozy. A love letter to Agatha Christie. Ah! Okay, I gotta tell you what this is about. So it goes, a snowstorm, a country house, old friends reunited, it's going to be murder. Look, there's a floor plan, everyone. Come on, come on. Let me tell you, before I press play, I like the song. I'm in love with the song. Okay, I'm not gonna read you out many synopses, but this one sounds, I, got, I gotta read you out the start of this. Torben Helly, our historian, Danish expert, and owner of several excellent Scandinavian jumpers, has been dragged to a remote south snowbound Northumbrian mansion for a 10 year reunion with old university friends. Things start to go sideways when their host, a reclusive and irritating tech entrepreneur, makes some shocking revelations at the table. Then these are followed by an apparent suicide and group faces attest to their wit and their trust, snowed in and cut off, Oh. Torben decides to draw upon all the tricks of Golden Age detectives past in order to solve the mystery. This is very exciting. This is very exciting. I'm really excited for this one. Oh, I think this is gonna be great. Look at it. I love a floor plan. That's how you get me. So I, I probably need to get to this soon. I feel like because it's snowed in, it could snow soon. What can I read this for? Okay, let me go like rearrange some of my videos so that maybe I can read this in February. Then we have got No One Can Know by Kate Ice Marshall. I haven't read any Kate Ice Marshall's adult thrillers that she started coming out with yet, but I'm really intrigued. So this one, a girly and her husband, she finds out she's pregnant, they're broke, everything's going wrong, she's sacked from her job, and she's like, okay, my love. There's something I haven't told you. I actually own my old family home with my sisters. We own it jointly. We can't sell it, but we can go live in it rent free. Okay. Only thing I haven't told you is my parents were murdered there and people maybe think I did it. <laughs> A profound silence has entered the chat. So I think it's about her reuniting with her sisters, mystery, who murdered their parents, etc, etc. I'm very excited for it. Then we have one, another one that I got an arc of. Death on the Lusitania by R.L. Graham. Lusitania's is one of the most luxurious ocean liners within 1915 and there's a murder on board. There's a murder on board and we're stuck on a boat and someone killed someone. A man's body was discovered in a locked cabin with a key inside and no gun to be found. So he's shot. But the room is locked. Locked room murder mystery. I love a good locked room murder mystery. I think I'm gonna enjoy that. Then we have Come and Get It by Kylie Reed, who is the author of Such a Fun Age. This one has very mixed reviews already. A lot of people are giving it three stars that I've seen have got the arcs of it. It's about this professor and students and money, indiscretion, bad behavior, desire, consumption, reckless abandon. I'm a little bit nervous for it. I really liked what Such a Fun Age was saying, what it was doing. I am in, I'm interested and I love the cover. I think the cover is very fun, but a lot of people are saying it's kind of just like people at college behaving badly. So then we have Bride by Ellie Hazelwood. There's a few in this video that I'm not going to spend too long on, but they're my most excited ones because they were on my 24 books read in 2024 video and this was one of them. It's a paranormal romance between a werewolf and a vampire who have to go into an arranged marriage to preserve the alliance, the, the tentative alliance, but they're rivals between their clans. And you're going home, sweetie. That's what it is. I'm very excited. Ali. <laughs> she can just keep writing. She can just keep writing and I'll keep reading. You know, I love you, Ali. I love you. Then we've got 14 Days by the Authors Guild. I wrote down it's by Margaret Atwood. I think it's edited by Margaret Atwood. And it's set in this apartment block in the early days of the COVID-19 lockdowns. And they meet on the roof every night. Like the residents of this apartment block meet on the roof every night and are like chatting about their lives. And it's written by various authors. But I think that you don't know who's written each chapter. So each author has written a different chapter, but you don't know who it has. Who are some of the other authors? Oh, Celeste Ng, Emma Donoghue, Neil Gaiman, John Grisham. So yeah, there's a lot of really well-known authors. I think this is an interesting idea. And also not knowing who wrote each chapter, I wonder if I'll be able to like pick them out 
or if anyone would be able to pick them out. Next we have An Education in Malice by S.T. Gibson. Some people said this is a sequel to A Diary of Blood. I don't think it is. I think it's just another vampire-y book. We're set at this like school for girls, isolated, and Carmilla's there. <laughs> Carmilla is a student. Yep. Yup! I'm excited for this one. Dark Academia, you know, it's coming out in February. I feel like it should come out in the autumn or, you know what I mean? It should have come out, that's a bit late because then we're getting into springtime and like, we're in the forgotten hills of Massachusetts. Then we have The Warm Hands of Ghosts by Catherine Arden, another one that is on my 2024 TBR because it's Catherine motherfucking Arden, baby. I don't know why I always say that. But it's just Catherine motherfucking Arden. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just Catherine motherfucking Arden. This is a World War One book, which does make me nervous, but it, we're following a brother and sister. The sister is a nurse and she has just found out that her brother has died, but for some reason she doesn't really believe it to be true. And then we're following the brother a year earlier when he finds himself, I think, in an overturned pillbox with an enemy sh soldier and they're trying to fight that fight their way out together. I just think it's a standalone. It's Catherine Arden. She's gonna give it to me. And I, the way she's been speaking about this book has me very intrigued. She's speaking about like what a labor it was, how difficult it was to write, like how what a what a bit. She's been nagging it up. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> She's been egging it up. And so, yeah, I'm really excited for this one. Then we have What Feasts at Night by T. King Fisher. This is a sequel to What Moves the Dead. And this one we're following Alex Easton again as I think they go to their old family hunting lodge and they turn up and the caretaker is dead. The, the lodge has been overturned and there's like a strange silence hanging around the lodge. It's again, it's a short novella, it's horror. I love T. King Fisher. I'm reading all T. King Fisher stuff. So I'm very excited for this one. Then we have one that's tentative. It's tentative. It's tentative. We have The Women by Kristen Hanna. It's it's a book set in the Vietnam War. I don't know. I'm just letting you all know that Kristen Hanna's got another book coming out. I enjoyed The Nightingale, but like it that is a book that is like, oh yeah, I'm gonna make you cry. My purpose is to make you cry. And I don't know how much it earned it. Like, I, I don't look back at that and think, oh, I was really emotionally invested, but like I bawled reading that book. I remember reading it still. Oh, the reviews, oh my God, guys, it's got 2,900 advanced ratings and people have obviously got arcs and it has got a 4.68 average rating. Everyone loves me. Well, the old bastard hates me, but they're just wrong. So this is basically telling the stories of women during the Vietnam War where they've their stories have been forgotten, essentially. Then we have Miss Laid in Parts Half Known by Sean McGuire. Yep. I think I'm gonna read this as soon as it comes out. I've, I have I have a video that I think I'm gonna push back a couple weeks so that this book can go in the video. <laughs> I can read it as soon as it comes out. This is the next in the Wayward Children series. We're following Ancy again, who we met. Well, we met in like a previous, previous book, but we really followed her in the last book in the Wayward Children series. If you don't know what this series yet is, where have you been? But it's about these portal worlds that these kids go to and it's the perfect world for them. And Antsy maybe is a little bit easier at finding doors. Maybe she finds it a bit easier than other people. So maybe she's gonna help some other people find doors. Maybe we're gonna go on a quest. It's been a while since we had a quest. And basically it, the books alternate between being in a world, in a portal world, like in a character's portal world, and then another one where we maybe start off at Ellen the West School for Wayward Children and like either it's set at the school or we travel from the school, if that makes sense. And this is one that starts at the school. And I love those ones. I think I'm more of a school girly. I like the school setting. Oh God, we're only in February still. <laughs> Yeah. Then we have Tender Beast by Lazelle Sambri. Lazelle is an author tuber who I used to watch a lot when I was really in my author tuber days. I haven't been watching as much because I'm, that's not my focus right now, but maybe it will be by the end of the year. But Lazelle has the Blood Like Magic duology, Delicious Monsters, which came out last year, which I heard wonderful things about. And this is her release this year. And I just, I own Blood Like Magic. I need to read it. All of her books sound incredible. This one is about a family dynamic. I think it's about these four siblings and the eldest one is told when her, before her mother dies to look after Dom. I think and she's like what? okay and then um, she finds Dom with blood on his hands and there's a body and she's like uh and he's like I promise I didn't matter <laughs> <laughs> and so it's about these family secrets and family dynamics. I think that's a very interesting idea of a book. Next one I am I can't tell you much about. I can't remember. I can't remember and I the plot I read it. I didn't give me much. It is a dark and drowning tide by Alison Saf. I just added it because of the cover. I'm gonna be quite honest with you. And great gowns, beautiful gowns. It's sapphic fantasy with a sharp tongued folklorist and her academic rival must team up to solve their mentor's murder. Sapphic fantasy romance. Mm. Mm. And listen, I'm not the biggest like romanticy fan as we keep proving, but I think something about this one and it's, I think I'm hoping it's gonna have very lush lyrical writing based on the cover. It's entirely based on the cover. But like when I saw that cover, I could not add it to my, to my spreadsheet. Could I? Nope, nope. <laughs> 
Then we have Murder Road by Simone St. James. I'm really excited about this one. So a young couple, they're driving down the road. They're trying to find, they're like, we're on our way to our honeymoon. Where do we, like, where's our, where's our resort? And they pick up a hitchhiker and find out, they look at the hitchhiker and there's blood seeping out of their coat. And then this like truck starts burning towards them and the hitchhiker dies. Gaga Chandra. Here's the thing. So most of James's books always have like a speculative element to them. So I'm suspecting that there's like a loop or like old murders are being relived on this road. It's set in 1995. Oh, I, I suppose it James. I love, I love her fresh take on books. It's kind of like a horror, kind of like a murder mystery, kind of speculative. There's so many layers to it. So I'm very excited for Murder Road. I think that could be a, a good one this year. Then we have The Best Way to Bury Your Husband by Alexia Cass Casale, Casale. This one is about four women who kill their husbands and they're helping each other bury the bodies, basically, basically. Good for her. <laughs> Good for her. Good for her. That's what you need to know. That's what you need to know. Then we have Where Sleeping Girls Lie by Farida Abike Iomede. This is the author of Ace of Spades, which I didn't love and everyone else loved, but I want to give her another chance. This is again set at like a boarding school. She loves a good like prestigious school setting. <laughs> Girl new to boarding school discovers dark secrets and cover-ups after her roommate disappears and a student is found dead. So murder mystery, I'm, I'm intrigued. I love the cover. I'm gonna give her another go. I'm gonna give her another go. Then we have The Mystery Writer by Sulari Gentile. This is about a mystery writer who turns up to like her brother's house and is like, let me in, let me in, I need to write these books. But then her mentor is brutally murdered and her brother is the, su is the suspect. I read The Woman in the Library by Sulari Gentile, which I didn't love as much as I was hoping, but I did really enjoy. I, I feel like her books always have like a little, they're like a mystery, but with like a little element, like a weird element to them, you know, a little added element. Then we have the Kellerby Code. Here's the situation with this one, the Kellerby Code. It's got from 16 ratings, so not a lot of people have read this yet in terms of arcs, but it's got a 3.25 average rating, which is not a good start. I'm a little bit concerned. <laughs> but part of that is probably because it's got so few ratings, like a one, it's got one one star and that will throw it off a lot. But it's about this guy who is living a world he can't afford to in which he doesn't belong, but he like does stuff for his friends, but then he finds out his friends are like dating and he's like, absolutely not, I love one of you. Maybe, maybe he's gonna kill one of them, I don't know. The plot doesn't give me a lot, but Richard Osman recommended it on his podcast the other day and said like it's his favorite book he's read in ages. So like, I have to listen to Richard. Where would I be if I didn't listen to Richard? I have to. So I've added it to my spreadsheet. <laughs> Richard loved it. So I've probably got to read it. Then we've got Icarus by Kay Ancrum. I really enjoyed everything I've read from Kay Ancrum. She's got very, very unique writing. And this is, I'm not going to tell you the whole plot because it's a bit confusing. But all you need to know, reimagines the tale of Icarus as a star-crossed love story between a young art thief and the son of the man he's been stealing from. And if you've read Kay Ancrum before and you know her writing, you just know what we're in for. You just know what we're in for. That's all I'm going to tell you. You have to know, if you get, the girls are going to get it and the girls are don't, don't. Like if you know the vibe of Kay Ancrum, you know what we're going for, and I'm very excited. <laughs> oh, then we have one I'm so excited for. I think this is gonna be so good. We have How to Solve Your Own Murder by Kristen Perrin for fans of Knives Out and the Thursday Murder Club. <laughs> this one's so fun. So it's about this woman who, when she was young, in 1965, she receives a prophecy from like a fortune teller saying, yeah, girl, you're gonna be murdered. Sucks to be you. <laughs> And so she spends her whole life trying to solve her murder. She's compiling dirt on everyone in her life. She's got dossiers, baby. And then her, is it her niece? Or her granddaughter? I'm not sure. Some relative. <laughs> oh, it's her great aunt. Yeah, okay, no, yeah, okay, so it's her great niece. She turns up the house and finds this woman murdered. She's been murdered. And so she's trying to use all the dirt that she's dug up and like the secrets and everything to like figure out who's done this murder. I think this is going to be a great release this year. Then we have, as you guys know, if you watched my last video, one of my most exciting releases of the year, and it is The Last Murder at the End of the World by Stuart Turton. We all need to take a moment. We all need to take a moment. I'm so excited to be here! Woo! Okay, so we've got the last 122 people left and three scientists in this world. They are on this little island. The whole rest of the world has been destroyed by this fog. They are protected on this island from this fog, okay? They are like, they're fishing, they're farming, they're living their lives, like, woo! We're on the island. Then one of the scientists is murdered and it triggers a lowering of the security system. And so the fog's gonna come get them if they don't solve what the murder happened. They have 92 hours. And the security system has also wiped everyone's memories of exactly what happened the night before, which means someone on the island is a murderer and they don't even know it. The murderer doesn't know that they did the murder. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not kidding. That's the best song I ever heard. <laughs> 
Oh my god! I am so excited for this one. This is gonna. I, this is gonna be five stars. This is gonna be five stars. This is gonna be five stars. I am so excited. Well, we have a lot of my most excited books coming out in a row. Then we have Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. This was also in this video, and the next one was in the video. Just for the Summer is about this boy and a girl who both, when they date people, that person after they break up goes on to find their soulmate, the love of their life. And so they decide to date to cancel each other out. Abby Jimenez has become one of my romance girlies. I trust her. I get along with her. I love her romances. And this one's like her first one that I've read that's a bit speculative. So I'm very excited for it. Then we have The Reappearance of Rachel Price by Holly Jackson. This girlie's mother disappeared when she was younger. She's lived in the shadow of her mother's disappearance forever. A documentary is being made about the disappearance and her mother turns up again. This is me, gonna be me and Holly Jackson reunited. We're gonna get along again, we're gonna be besties again. We're gonna forget Five Survive ever existed. We don't need to talk about that. But yeah, I think this is gonna be a return to form for Holly Jackson and I'm very, very, very excited. Then we have The Gathering by CJ Tudor who is a very reliable author for me. And I'm just gonna read you out the synopsis because it's so short. It says, a small Alaskan town, a missing boy, a brutal murder, a detective brought in from out of state to assist the former sheriff who investigated a similar murder 25 years ago. But are they hunting a twisted psychopath or something even more terrifying? That's all we know. But the idea of it being set in this small isolated Alaskan town, very exciting to me. Then we have The Familiar by Lee Bardugo. I am gonna be honest with you, the plot of this one is not going in my head, but I love Lee Bardugo and I'm excited for something different from her. I'm very, I love whenever she comes up with something different. Grisha verse, fuck off, honestly. I guess that really upset her and I heard that she never wants to see my face again. Sabrina. Um, this is a historical fantasy set during the Spanish Golden Age and I think there's like political maneuverings and secrets secrets and hiding and scheming. Just look at the cover. We've all added it to our most anticipated releases. I, the synopsis is, uh, sometimes when I'm doing this video, there's just certain synopsis that don't make it into the brain. Like I try and they're just not easily digestible. They don't make it in, but I'm very excited. I'm gonna love it. I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna read it this year. Oh, then we have One of Us Knows by Alyssa Cole. Again, I didn't love None of Us, what, no? When no one is watching. <laughs> I didn't love when I was watching as much as everyone else did, but this one sounds very interesting. We've got Kanitria Nash, who has disassociative identity disorder. So she has lots of alters. They have lots of, the synopsis refers to the characters, both she and they. They've become a caretaker of this historical estate. They get stuck on the island because of like a storm, I think. And this guy that she hates and brought her life crushing down is murdered and she's the prime suspect and they have to figure out what's going on. So I mean, I think that sounds like a very interesting synopsis. So I'm excited for that one. Then we have When Among Crows by Veronica Roth. I've really been intrigued by a lot of the stuff Veronica Roth has been coming out with lately. I feel like Divergent happened and then I feel like she disappeared but I don't think she did. I think she came out with like another trilogy. But I really enjoyed Poster Girl by Veronica Roth. I really loved the short story arc that she wrote in one of the like Amazon Kindle collections. And then she's come out with two novellas, a very different sounding. And I'm just intrigued by this one. Step into a city where monsters feast on human emotions, knights split their soul to make their weapons and witches always take more than they can give. We're gonna go find Baba Yaga for an enchanted flower. I don't know. I just like the cover and everything that Veronica Roth is doing at the moment intrigues me. So I added it. <laughs> <laughs> then we have The House That Horror Built by Christina Henry. I love the cover for this one. I love it. This is about a woman who is cleaning the house of a reclusive horror director. She loves horror films. She's like, oh my God, this is so fun. Look at these props that were in these horror films. I'm dusting it. And then she heard, starts to hear a voice behind a locked door of someone calling for help. But our guy lives alone and never has any visitors. So like, who the fuck is this? I love the cover. I think it's gonna be camp. Camp! It's camp! It's camp! I don't know what to tell you! Then we've got the main character by Jacqueline Goldis. I really enjoyed The Chateau by Jacqueline Goldis. I know that everyone loved it, but I enjoyed it and I love the cover of this one. So we've got this mystery author who hires real people and conducts intensive interviews with them for her mystery books. Okay, and she puts the main character, the new main character on a train with her brother, her best friend and her ex-fiance, all passengers on this plane. And maybe people are gonna be murdered. What's going on? It's like going on a plane, it's like, it's on a train through like um, Italy, like the, the kind of, the, what's the word? You know what I mean? Like the nice parts of Italy, like on the coast where everyone's like, what's going on for the day? We're there, right? That's the vibe. And it's secrets. It's set on a train. I love a train. I love ice. I love isolation. I love secrets from the past. So I I'm really excited for this one. I love the cover. I think it's going to be a fun one. Then we have Flawless Girls by Anna Marie Macklemore. This is about two sisters who get sent off to this private boarding school. One leaves within a day. The other one comes back and is like, 
losing her shit. She's like acting very strange, is possibly murderous, and then it goes missing the next day. And her sister's like, what? What? What's going on? <laughs> I've only read one Anime McCamore, but Anime McCamore's books always make it onto my most anticipation. <laughs> <laughs> this list because I always love the synopses of them. Then we have the Midnight Feast by Lucy Foley. I will read. I will read the synopsis out to you again because it's very short and we don't know a lot yet. I spoke about this in my other videos. This was another one that's on my 2024 TBR. It says, "Welcome to the opening weekend of the Manor, a luxury resort built on top of old secrets and an ancient wood. And the characters we have are the founder, the lover, the mystery guest, the kitchen help, the detective." all have an agenda, all have a past, but not everyone will survive. Lucy Foley, the woman that you are, the love of my life, I will defend you to the death and I will always read your books. Thank you. Then we have another Ali Hazelwood. <laughs> we have her like normal adult romance book. It's sciency, it's love. I think that they're wanting to buy each other's companies and they have like a secret affair. I don't know if that's quite, or like she works at the, at the thing. She works at the place that he wants to buy. And she's like off limits, but they start an affair. It's Sally Hazelwood. We know what we're getting. You don't need to know the synopsis. Then we have She Left by Stacey Gray, which I think, is this a debut? Yeah, this is a debut that I thought sounded interesting. So this is about a girl who walked out of a house, house party, left her friends one night, and then they were all brutally murdered. And 20 years later, 10 people with connections to the crime have been invited to a remote cliffside house by a journalist looking to do a story on the crimes. But then not everything's what it seems. Maybe they're gonna die, they're isolated. There's a lot of isolated house books this year, which I love. I love that for me. <laughs> At the end of the day, all I want to say is thank you, Lady Gaga. <laughs> we have How to Make a Horror Movie and Survive by Craig DeLuey. This sounds like another, there's a lot of horror movie. I've got The House That Horror Built, How to Make a Horror Movie and Survive, and then we've got Horror Movie. <laughs> This is apparently a darkly humorous horror novel that sees a famous 80s slasher director set out to shoot the most terrifying horror movie ever made using an occult camera that might be and probably is demonic. So we need to know, babes. It's all we need to know. <laughs> Craig, thank you. <laughs> the idea of a demonic camera Apparently it just starts wailing. The camera just starts wailing randomly. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> then we have Middle of the Night by Riley Sager. This is Riley's first time writing a male a male protagonist. How does he do it? What a brave step, Riley. <laughs> this is about a guy who I think in their backyard, him and his friend were in a, sleeping in a tent one night. You know, as a kid sometimes you're like, oh my God, I wanna go camping. And like, you think I'll just go camping in my back garden. In the night, someone sliced the tent open with a knife and stole his best friend. 30 years later, he goes back to his old family home. People, like, things start appearing around the house in the garden that like are his best friends. And he's like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> and something that Riley Sager has been playing with a lot in his recent books is, is there a supernatural element or isn't there? That's been a running theme in a lot of his books. And sometimes there has been a supernatural element and sometimes there hasn't. And that excites me. That excites me because you're keeping me on my toes. I love a speculative element, but like with him, he's always got a hint of like, is there or isn't there? And sometimes there is and sometimes there isn't, you know? With Summer St. James, you always pretty much know there is going to be a speculative element and that is, that is is gonna be there. But like, I like that Riley's keeping us guessing. So I'm excited for that one. How many have we got left? We've got two left. We've got The Cautious Traveler's Guide to the Wastelands by Sarah Brooks. I think this is another debut. So it's the end of the 19th century and the world is awash with marvels. I love anything that's like Victorian times. There's nothing so marvelous as the wastelands, a terrain of terrible miracles that lies between Beijing and Moscow. Nothing touches this abandoned wilderness except the Grand Great Trans-Siberian Express, an impenetrable train built to carry cargo across continents but which now transports anyone who dares to cross the shadowy wastelands. <laughs> on the platform steps a curious cast of characters, a grieving woman with a borrowed name, a famous child born on the train, and a disgraced naturalist, all heading for the great exhibition in Moscow. I love anything on a train. I love the cover. I love the historical setting. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I'm obsessed. And then our last book is one I just mentioned. It's Horror Movie by Paul Tremblay. I've never read anything by Paul Tremblay, but I'm willing to give him a go. And it's like this cursed, you know, the cursed film trope slash genre. In 1993, a group of young guerrilla filmmakers spent four weeks making Horror Movie, a notorious disturbing art house horror flick. The weird part, only three of the film scenes were ever released to the public. I've started reading the good synopses out to you because they just excite me. And then basically three decades later, Hollywood wants a reboot and there's only one surviving like member of the cast or character and he's He's gonna try and like help them make the film but everything starts coming back to him and like the memories and the darkness and what have you. <laughs> okay everyone that is all my most anticipated releases for the first half of the year. Wow that was a lot. I feel like I got through them at good pace and didn't bore you though. I tried to keep things moving. <laughs> 
But yeah, let me know any of these that you're excited for too. Let me know which ones you think I'm most gonna love. Because as we know, we were trying to make this like my best reading year ever. It's not off to a good start. So I'm really gonna need some things to pick up the numbers. <laughs> I'm really excited for a lot of these. I think a lot of them have really high, high hopes and high potential that I'm gonna love them. So let me know also if there's any books that you're really excited for coming out in the first half of the year that I have not mentioned. There could be, there could be some books I have not mentioned that you're very excited for. But let me know and I will see you guys soon in another video. Bye!